Over the centuries, Shadespire has trapped many adventurers within its illusory borders. Some are noble and intrepid souls who seek to end the dark enchantment that lies over the city, while others are avaricious looters or blood-crazed cultists. All are pursued by agents of Nagash's will who seek to restore order to the mirrored city. The battle mages of the Sacrosanct Chamber are masters of storm magic, able to summon the cleansing power of the heavenly tempest to the fingertips with a mere gesture. Knight Encanter Everon Stormsire was chosen personally by the God King Sigmar to invest the curse of Chadespire, for the irascible mage's knowledge of unbinding and banishment is extraordinarily comprehensive. Stormsire has long studied the negative effects of the reforging process and his grim demeanor has only grown more intense as the troubling implications become clearer. At first, Stormsire considered the legend of Chadespire merely another distraction, another dead end that would lead only to frustration and failure. Yet upon examining the power of the curse that binds the city and studying slivers of haunted shade claws, a faint glimmer of hope has been rekindled in his heart. Alongside his two loyal companions, Rastus and Amis, Stormsire walks the halls of the mirrored city, searching for answers and a way to free Shadespire from the great necromancer's dark enchantments. Any who come between this formidable trio and their goal are eradicated with crackling bolts of lightning, or swept aside with fulminating blasts of energy. The Briar Queen was once a death mage of formidable power, a great enemy of Chadespire, whose undead armies breached the city walls and threatened to tear down all that the Cataphranes had built. Only after unthinkable bloodshed was the Briar Queen defeated, captured and sentenced to an eternity of imprisonment and torment in the Night Vault, far beneath the city streets. Years passed and this agonizing existence slowly drove the Briar Queen to madness. Trapped for centuries in a cell of obsidian shade gloss, she was consumed by misery and despair. Yet an ember of hatred for those who had condemned her to this fate still lingered. She was the perfect tool for Nagash to unleash upon those who dared to trespass within the mirrored city. The great necromancer dragged her screaming essence from her crystal tomb and fashioned her inchoate malice into the dread form of a banshee. With her former mastery of necromantic magic still intact, Varklar the Cruel is the Briar Queen's major domo, an infamously sadistic geist who was formerly the High Warden of the Night Vault until he himself was imprisoned for a string of vile murders. Nagash's final gift to the Briar Queen was an army of malicious spirits with which to see his will done. The greatest of their number is the Everhanged, the spectral echo of a serial murderer, around whose neck still hangs the gallows rope that ended his reign of terror. Vortimus, his Tsangor lieutenant, Kicharik, and the twin Kyrik have long roamed the mirrored city of Chadespire. They serve at the will of the mysterious Gaunt Summoners, a mysterious cabal of Tsinchen sorcerers, which of there is little known, save that there can be only nine, the nine masters of the mysterious Silver Tower. Ever since the city fell, Vortimus has sought to open a portal between hidden Shadespire and one of those twisted labyrinthine fortresses. All his efforts have thus far been in vain, yet with the unraveling of magic in the mortal realms, a new opportunity has arisen. After centuries of dwelling and scheming within the mirrored city, the eyes of the Nine found themselves within the living mountain of Beastgrave, where the Cataphrine curse had spread and opened a bi-directional pathway between Beastgrave and the mirrored city. According to Vortimus, this event was a blessing from the Changer of Ways, who had broken open their cell in order to guide them to their destiny. During this time, they encountered other prowling warbands, initially being attacked by Scathe's wild hunt. After determining that Beastgrave was woven into the root of Gur itself, Vortimus became determined to replicate his plans for Shadespire upon all of Gur itself. Vortimus the All-Seeing is the Magister who leads the eyes of the Nine. He plots and schemes to directly connect the key sites of power to the Silver Towers of Zinj. 
Charik is a Tsangor who is bound by fate to Vortimus and is bound to obey his commands. Though Kacharik suffers Vortimus' rule only grudgingly, through the blessings of Tsin she recalls with perfect clarity every life, every defeat and every victory he has experienced since entering Shadespire, which makes him powerful indeed. Navia is a Kyric acolyte who was raised up from the Arcanite cults Vortimus had seeded when Nagash turned Shadespire into an escapable tomb. Whereas most children outgrew their paltry rivalries, her and her twin brother had embraced their opposition as an unholy mandate. Navia's mind overflows with labyrinthine schemes. She plans to seize Shadespire for herself and to rise to power at the expense of her main rival. Turush. Turush is motivated by cruel and selfish ambition. His every thought and deed is calculated to aid him in the accumulation of sorcerer's power at the expense of his sister. With Vortimus is also a lowly blue horror, an ever-shifting mass of flesh limbs and flame spewing orifices. Horrors are gibbering, malicious and generally vile parodies of their patron god. Short necklace creatures with long multi-joint arms. When the blue horror is slain, it transforms into an even more lowly horror in the form of a flaming brimstone ditto. Sarbag is the leader of his namesake warband, a moon clan madcap shaman. He mistakenly led his scuttling band to the mirrored city while looting the ruins of Shadespire. Sarbag sniffed out a tantalizing aroma of fungal spores drifting up from the deep underground. Directing his warband to tunnel into an enormous sinkhole, they tumbled into the darkness and found themselves within the thanatological gardens of the city's former Ketophrane masters, where once vibrant flower beds and lush plantations filled these glass-domed halls. Now there were only fields of choking mold and towering clusters of death-capped mushrooms, everything Sarbag had wished for and then some. The shaman has taken it upon himself to spread this noxious fungus far and wide, drawing more and more of his numberless kin into the mirrored city. He carries with him a captured and imprisoned sniffer spite, which he has persuaded to track down potent magic fungi. Driskit is a squig herder responsible for overseeing the warband's cave squigs, bone cracker and gobbler. Like the cave squigs he oversees, he is notoriously difficult to kill. On the occasion where Bonecracker and Gobbalook flees from combat, they will snap at anything that is foolish enough to get in their way. With Sarbak is also the loony loon smasher fanatic Snurk Sourtang, who with his giant ball and chain billows forth to smash the enemies under his huge ball of jagged metal. Bringing up the rear is Progdanetta, Stickit, Redcap and Dips. The tribe of the Black Fang are one of the countless tribes that, over the centuries, have pledged themselves to the ruinous powers. None amongst their number are more infamous than the shaman Thedra Skalskryer and the warband known as the Godsworn Hunt. All these warriors consider themselves to be Dark Oaths, swearing great pacts to the Dark Pantheon in return for reward. Yet the oath made by the Godsworn Hunt is particularly ambitious. They have sworn Sworn the Pact of Soul and Iron, offering the lives of Sigmar's Stormcast Eternals in sacrifice to the gods. In order to make good on her pact with the Dark Gods, Thedra has led the Gods Sworn Hunt into the depths of Shadespire. Ambitious and utterly ruthless, the War Shaman plots to lead the tribe of the Black Fang. To do so, though, she will need to prove her might with a worthy sacrifice in the form of Stormcast Eternals. Skalskryer's command of magic is powerful and instinctive, and those assailed by her sorceries find their bodies become withered and emaciated as all vitality is drained from them. Such enforced weakness makes them easy prey for the remainder of the Godsworn Hunt. Grundon Blood Eye is a warrior of the Godsworn Hunt armed with a huge axe. Grundon lost his eye to a blow 
blow from an auric warboss, but claimed both his deed name and the brutish creature's war axe in the very same duel. Yagathra is a javelin wielding warrior. Dark energies bind the javelin to Yagathra, returning it to her hand that it may kill again. Olo is the foremost beast trainer of the tribe of the Black Fang. His hunting hounds have run down monstrous beasts of every description, driving them into the path of his pinpoint arrows. Grawl is a corrupted hound that accompanies his beast trainer Olo. Though savage in battle, Grawl follows its master's command with deadly precision. Shond Headclaimer is a mountain of a man, quick to laugh and quicker still to strike the heads from those who test his patience. He lives for battle, blood mead and glory. Shond dreads nothing, save that one day he will run out of worthy foes to slaughter. Molog the Mighty is a Dankhold Trogoth, who leads a warband of fellow Dankhold creatures. He originally slept in his mushroom-littered cavern beneath the Desert of Bones surrounding the city of Shadespire, until he was interrupted by a Skaven infestation. Furious at his untimely awakening, he stumbled upon the ruins of Shadespire before finding himself in the labyrinth of a mirrored city, where he seeks a new gloomy dank cavern to rest. He is armed with a massive club, which is covered with a myriad of mushrooms that secrete all manner of toxic fumes. He may also carry with him a jabber toad as a snack, a creature whose acidic skin also renders it an effective weapon in a pinch. With him is a bat squeak, a creature that followed Moloch out of his original dank cold cavern. Bat squeaks are little more than mouth with wings, which together proves, though, a deadly combination. With him is also a spite room, a a bizarre fungal creature. To stand downwind to a spite room can be fatal as the fungal clouds emitted by it can rot flesh from bone. Last but not least is a stalag squig, very much resembling a stalagmite, though it's not. In fact, it uses its inconspicuous appearance to close in on an enemy. Once in position, it releases fungal sediment that quickly subsumes nearby objects. Tempted by rumors of treasure, Bjorgen Thunrik led his warband into the ruined city of Shadespire, eventually falling into the cursed mirrored city. The profiteers initially participated in the long-running game of collecting shard of the Faneway mirror, but eventually deduced that the cataphranes were incapable of repairing the device. During this time, Thunrik had died no less than eight times. The warband eventually stumbled upon a spatial anomaly, a tear upon reality. The warband decided to venture forth into it, which turned out to be a link between Shadespire and the Beastgrave. The warband arrived intact within the living mountain of Beastgrave. Being Duardin, they could get a sense of which passageways led out and immediately escape the mountain to find themselves outside, halfway up the mountain looking upon the landscape of Gur. However, they understood that should they decide to simply leave, they would be doomed a life of poverty, while Thunric could sense that the mountain harbored riches. Thus, the warband decided to venture back into Beastgrave following the scent of Aether Gold. They eventually did find a massive cache of aether gold ingots within a shattered pocket of amber, enough that they would surely reach the highest level of power within Keraton society, should they manage to recover it. However, their celebration is interrupted by the arrival of the Moon Clan warband Sarbag Skits, and in the ensuing fight, all save Thunric perished. Mourning the loss of his comrades, Thunric was further bewildered to find that the cache of Aethergold had disappeared, save for a single ingot seemingly left by the mountain as a painful memento. However, his warband quickly revived, indicating that the group may have escaped the mirrored city, but not the cataphrane curse. The passage which the profiteers first came from was found to have been sealed with amber, and all new passages now only lead down deeper into the mountain. London. The dauntless leader of the band, Aether chymist Bjorgen Thunrik, has developed quite the reputation in Baraknar for being able to sniff out fresh seams of Aether gold and for being utterly tenacious in his pursuit of riches. He is armed with an atmospheric atomizer with which he can augment the weapons of his nearby skyfarers or create a vacuum around himself to suffocate his foes. With him is his trusted companion, Kaskan Draxkur, an end rigger armed with a vulcanizer pistol and a deadly sky pike. 
Dead Eye Lund, armed with a deadly Aethyshort rifle. Decades of booming combat have rendered Lund extremely hard of hearing, yet his vision and aim are as sharp as a freshly honed blade. Enric Ironhale carries an Aethematic Volleygun. A veteran in his Argonaut company, Enric lets the more spry Skyfarers lead the charge while he peppers the enemy from afar. Bringing up the rear is the assassin Garrett Alenson, armed with a privateer pistol and a swashbuckling Orknaut cutter. Ilfari's Guardians are a Sylvaneth warband of tree revenants led by the Thorn Witch, Ilthari. Ilthari tirelessly seeks those soul pods that have been claimed by Nagash. By channeling rampant life magic, she rids the dead places of those who would serve the great necromancer. She is armed with a briar staff and spiteful thorns and is accompanied by a spite that attacks with its snapping mandibles. The barbed tendrils surrounding Ilthari can quickly reduce an enemy to bloody ribbons. Scathale is armed with an enchanted great blade. Like other members of the warband, he once served as a diplomat or an emissary, but has now become evergreen with bitter wrath and seeks only vengeance and remembrance for their slain kind. Galangan of the Glade is armed with a protector glaive. When wielded correctly, his protector glaive can turn aside any blow with ease. His formidable size belies the swiftness with which he is able Able to defend his kind. Unslain is a revenant archer armed with a revenant bow. Even when firing into a swirling melee, Unslain is able to pick off her enemies with unerring accuracy. This is Mats again, chiming in to thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like and comment, and to not miss out on future content, ring the bell as well. And if you really liked this video, feel free to click the thanks button just below this video. And if you want to support me even further, you can now become a channel member and claim the title of Critical Focus Fan. Until next time, take care, bye.